One more thing about uh, that Coltrane Jones. Uh, I was I was in a club in Chicago and um, things were running a little bit late and uh, the place was supposed to close at three. It was a Saturday night, uh, but on on Saturdays they could stay open that extra hour, so they didn't have to close at two. They could close at three. So about uh, one thirty. John Coltrane Quartet, John Coltrane, Jimmy Garrison, Elvin Jones, and McCoy Tyner started playing uh, impressions. So I said, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, uh, at 3 o'clock, the guy who owned the club tipped through the audience and locked the door so nobody could get in or out. <laughs> uh, and they're still playing, see? <laughs> so I'm saying, damn. That's so around... 5.15 when they went back to the melody I mean the place went up for grabs you know and it was, it was about a it was about a five or a six minute ending because it, 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 it required that and then, uh, so we hit the we hit the street, you know, and people were hollering, "Love, peace, freedom, love, love!" And it was sunrise. And then later on, I I kind of subliminated all of that because it scared me a little bit. And I didn't think about it again until this same interview, uh, where Elvin Jones mentioned how you follow somebody. Um, and they asked him what was the longest he'd ever played with, with Coltrane, what was the longest number that they'd ever played. And uh, he didn't say that time in Chicago. He said one time in Philadelphia where they, where they played one tune for a whole matinee about, uh, about three and a half, four hours, something like that. <laughs> Impressed the hell out of me. <laughs> and... Uh, so that's that's one reason why why you know Coltrane impressed me so much. <laughs> what are we supposed to do now? <laughs>